Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy, happy, clappy, clappy. I hope you're having a great day. You know, I got to be honest with you because I made a commitment in my heart. I made a commitment to the Lord not that long ago. He's been working on me and he's been working through me that I I was just going to keep it real. That I that I was committed to not being polished and perfect and pretty and having everything all pre-planned and packaged so that everything that I produce is is going to be received in a way that everyone's just going to eat from it like sugary little, you know, candy. Okay, here's the thing, guys. I, I, I need to keep it real. The, the post that I posted on my Instagram today, it happened to be a scheduled post that I didn't even think about or look at or whatever. But when I saw it come up today, it was a word that I needed. And it is a quote from Stephen Furtick that says, The birthmark of a believer is a bullseye. How many of you actually know what that really looks like and what that really means? Listen, I am getting fired at in so many different directions right now. I am getting worked in the spirit. I'm getting worked in the natural and in the supernatural, okay? And the reason that I'm I'm coming on here and I'm sharing this with you is because I believe in my heart that somebody needs to be encouraged with my struggle, with my story, with my journey today. Because you might look at this and you might think, dang girl, she is going for it. She is just fearless. She is going out. She is just preaching and teaching and loving and pouring out and investing. And you know, it is so encouraging to me. Those of you that have sent messages on my live yesterday that said that they really were encouraged by that word about uh, rejection and praying through a season of rejection. You guys, I may have made that sound a lot more pretty and polished than what it really looks like, because here's the honest truth. Many of you don't know this, but I'll go on a live and I'll, I'll give a message I truly just feel is in my heart that is um, super passionate about. It's something the Lord is showing me. He's releasing me to, to give it. Maybe it's prophetic or maybe it's just a word of encouragement or maybe it's just sharing, quite honestly, what I'm going through myself and in my own faith journey. And what you don't know sometimes is that I get rocked. I get rocked after that. I get massively tested by what I'm even preaching and teaching. To the extent, sometimes, I'm going to be flat out honest with you, sometimes I am laid out for the rest of the day. No joke. It is that hard. And so I just want to encourage somebody today that if you truly, if you are, if you're really going to go for it, if you're really going to step in the ring of Christianity, if you're really just going to stop wearing the jersey and you're, you're really wanting to get in the game and you're, you're saying yes to Jesus and you're saying, you know what, use me, Lord, here's my hands, you know, go where, here I am, Lord, send me. I want to tell you something because this isn't really spoken of a lot of times, but the battle, the warfare, the opposition, oh, 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 you don't even know. <laughs> it is intense. It is not fun. It is not pretty. The fire is hot. The heat is hot. Okay. And I really feel like I am doing a disservice to the world if I am not sharing the, the reality that true Christian living, that a surrendered life um, yeah, it has blessings. It has blessings. It has blessings. But prepare to get your butt kicked sometimes. Prepare to be deeply challenged sometimes. Prepare to have your own theology tested sometimes. Prepare to have your own heart going through the, the refiner's fire, okay? Prepare to have the Lord go, hey, tap, tap, tap. Hmm. Uh, can we sit down and talk about some things? That's what he does with me, flat out. Like, hey, Heather. Hmm. Um, I love you. Uh, can we sit down and talk about some things? Because uh, I, I kind of sense that there's a little pride stuff going on here. And uh, I think that we should talk about that and just, you know, kind of yank some of that stuff out. Do you know that that, 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 is, that is hard? Do you know the amount of rejection? I mean, I spoke about rejection and the season of rejection. And I'm not like, ooh, cry, cry, woe is me. No, I am I am coming on here because I know the other people are walking through these seasons. And they don't know who to talk to about it. And they don't know who to share this stuff with. They don't know who to process with. Because when we're, uh, the messaging of this world and this perfectly polished, pretty, you know, everything's all put together. And yay, let's let's all circle together. Let's join hands. Let's pray. Let's, let's you know, let's jump up and down. Let's crank up the music like let's just you know let's go just focus on serving on Sundays like so good so good so good so good love it love it love it love it and then there's real life 
And then there's real life. And then there are real challenges. And then there are bad reports. And then there's lost jobs. And then there's financial difficulty. And then there's problems in our marriage. And then there's problems within our families with our kids. And then there's difficulty uh, in 10,000 different ways. And I know that the, that the scripture tells us to count it all joy, to count it all joy, to count it all joy when you're going through trials and testing um, because he's developing in you a new character and a perseverance, that he's developing, he's refining you, that he's making you into the likeness of his image, that he's testing the soil of your soul to make sure that it's nutritious and that it is susceptible to receiving the seeds so that it can actually grow and you can produce fruit of the spirit, right? Okay, that, that, that is part of the Christian walk. That is part of our journey. That is part of what real life application, faith in action is like. But I am doing you a disservice if I am not just being really honest and saying that not only in my own life, but you yourself are going to go through some really hard times. And and if you don't like to hear that, then play it cool. Play it safe. Stay in your little comfort zone. You know, like, you know, like just keep keep doing it. Like keep doing, keep doing that thing. Um, that's awesome. Keep doing it. I bless you on that. But, um, for the bold, for the courageous, for the sold out surrendered people, for the ones that say yes, fully yes, an unfiltered yes. And, uh, 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 yes, uh, that the, that the Lord just, you say, go wherever you go, I'll go. And whatever you do, I'll do. And wherever, whatever doors you open, I'm going to walk through. Whatever doors you close, I'm going to say thank you for. And whatever testing that I endure, like, you know, for those people, not sideline Christians, like flat out, like, let's do this. It's going to get hard. It's going to get real hard. I wanted to quit yesterday. Because I was really confronted with the reality that there are a tremendous amount of people that I've been walking alongside for a couple years. I've been pouring into, investing into, praying over, walking alongside, joining hands and huddles and prayer. You know, all of that and encouraging and loving and just in the trenches with and, and all of that. And then, and then I'm noticing that they gone. They gone. They're not here no more. They're not going to see this video. They're not following me on Instagram. They're not journeying with me in life. They're not texting my phone no more. <laughs> and, and that was a hard reality to be confronted with, to be quite honest with you. And, and I'm just, I'm sharing this with you because I know that there's somebody else out there that may um, endure seasons like this. And you're going to question yourself. You're going to say, what in the heck is wrong with me? What am I doing? I pulled out my journal. I got in prayer. I got on the ground. I pulled my blanket over me. I prayed last night. I said, Lord, I'm, I don't want to do this anymore. I was, I was literally, literally telling God, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do this. Instagram is stupid. I think it's dumb. I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to go after this anymore. I don't want, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be faced with rejection anymore. I don't want to do this. I'm just going to shut it down. I'm going to shut my website down. I'm going to shut all the per, the plans that I've been, you know, the projects and things that I've been working on in my heart that the Lord has given me vision for. I was like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Like really? I got up this morning and I just yelled back at the devil. I mean, I walked around my house. I was praying. I was like, not today, devil. No, you got me down last night. I'm not doing this. And so here I am on Instagram. I am going to take a step back. I'm going to take a breather and a break because I was getting far too wrapped up in on important things and the social currency of our day, which is likes or follows or who's not following you anymore. And I'm like, no, no, I'm not doing this because the truth of the matter is this. There were messages that were sent to my inbox yesterday that I am so grateful for that 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 people said what you preach what you taught on on um, rejection was so needed for me right now in little cry face emojis and thanking me for bringing my journey out into the world because it identifies it it speaks into what other people are going through and not only is it like oh yeah me too oh poo sad sad oh, cry face no 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 if that's what you're getting from the tone of my messages then you are missing the entire point because the truth of the matter is i am here to declare these messages to say you know what i don't know what the next chapter has because how many of you know that when we have the privilege of reading the bible and the stories of of the of history okay we get to turn the page and read the next chapter 
Do y'all know that when the real life people were like actually going through it real time, they didn't have a book to just turn the page and be like, okay, good. Everything's going to turn out okay. We're going to win this battle. Yay. You know? No. Mm -mm. Mm Mm-mm. Mm-mm. They didn't know what the next chapter has. God knew what the next chapter has. God knows what the next chapter in your life contains. And it's going to get hard sometime, but I just want to encourage you with this, that you may not know what your next chapter contains, but the Lord does. And I want to encourage you that even when it gets hard, and even when you get discouraged, and even when depression comes and settles on you, and even when the enemy tries to use the things that God is intending for good to try and make it into evil, and is causing you to question your own value, your own worth, who you are in Christ, if what you're doing really matters, come on, stay at home moms. I mean, I get messages sometimes from like my beautiful friends and stay at home moms that feel so devalued by our world right now because it is now considered uncommon and they feel like they don't have the ability to relate to other people because it's such an uncommon ministry now you know and I just I I hope to God like I encourage them and pray over them and be like you know what you you are doing such a great work that you are raising kingdom builders that you are raising you are raising world changers that you are you are battling against the status quo and what society is telling you is normal and right and the right way and you are saying you know what no I'm following the path that God has me on in my life and the purposes and the plans that he has over me. And right now, that means that my ministry is my household and my children and raising them up in the ways that they should go so that they will grow up and they will never depart from the way of the Lord. What greater ministry is that? And yet the rest of us who don't know what to do with that because we've convinced ourselves to just, you know, to to conform to the patterns of this world. We don't know how to manage that. We don't know how to navigate that. And so we just feel distance from it because we feel like we can't relate to those moms or what. Guys, it's just dumb. I am learning to laugh at the, the, the just the, the silliness and the insanity that we have made the Christian walk. Like, let's get back to reality. Real life gets hard. That's why we have each other. And that's why we have the ability to, to, to um, comfort and confront one another. Um, not abandon them because they're speaking a language that, that is so confrontational to us. That is encouraging us to like stop playing small and living in our comfort zones. And actually using the gifts and the talents that God has given us in our life to do something amazing for the kingdom of God. While we have breath in our lungs and a beat in our chest. Because that is our responsibility. And if you don't know that you are probably not reading your Bible and I pray over you today that you will get in the word of God and that the Lord will meet you there and that Holy Spirit will help you navigate what it is that he is trying to get through to you because if you are just in this little level of playing small and playing cute and living in your comfort zone and you're not ready to be confronted with the ways of the world and the attacks of the enemy and the opposition of your friends and sometimes even your family members and the very people that you you love and have poured into and you're not prepared for them to exit your life okay then the Lord needs to do some work on you as he's doing some work on me because this is real life and it is hard and God is good and he knows that there is there is blessing in all of this okay that he is he's working me and I believe that he's working in you and that he's molding us and shaping us because he is the potter we are the clay and we give ourselves over to his hands and yeah it's gonna get hard sometimes but you know what I want you to know this for the people that hang with me on these messages and actually hear my heart behind my words and say you know what this is this is helpful reach out guys because we really need each other right now because I am realizing that the message that I have is confronting the to the people in comfort zones and they gone they out they're not connecting anymore so God bless them God bless them I hope to the Lord that they are are you know just loving their comfort and that they are so blessed. Ah, there's a little bug. It was like a dragonfly. <laughs> Uh, that they're so comforted and that they they that that's the place that they need to be on and that's the the capacity and the level of maturity that they're in and I think that's beautiful because I didn't always used to be this fired up I didn't always used to be um, this uh, willing I didn't always used to be this open I didn't used to be this um, 
you know, uh, inquisitive to the Lord. I didn't always used to ask him a lot of the questions that I'm asking him. Um, I just kind of took whatever was given at me, you know, whatever was sprinkled on me, whatever snack was served on a Sunday from the pulpit. And I just took that and, you know, that was nutritious enough. But as we grow and as we mature, we go, "Mm, no, I'm hungry for more. I'm so hungry for more. And that's just not satisfying anymore. And my daily morning devotionals are deeper than the snack that's served. And like, that's okay. That's a good thing, you guys. That's not me being negative and saying bad things. That That is called spiritual maturity. Praise the Lord. Like, that is a good thing. I hope, I pray that your morning devotionals are so deep and, and so, um, you're, you're so gripped by the presence of the Lord that, that, that you understand that his closeness within you is just so, like, overpowering all of the issues of life, you know? I'm telling you, I just felt like I had to get on this rant because I was just walking around my house and just praying to God and just shouting down the devil and the whole thing because, man, this is hard. I just wanted to, I said, you know, Lord, this, I just want to take a break. I don't want to do this today. And he said, yeah, his presence, spirit in the word, make me hunger and thirst. That's right. And we will never be satisfied. We'll never, we will never be full. That's what I'm learning. I am in my Bible so much. I'm so addicted to it, like ridiculously addicted to it. When people tell me, I don't read my Bible very often or it's challenging for me or it's hard or, you know, I just don't, I just don't really understand it or like that's just not the way like I, you know, connect or feel close to God and stuff. When I, I, I've been there, like I've so been there. (laughs) It's not like I came out of the womb addicted to the word of God. It's not like I came out of the womb and was like, okay, like let's. Let's, uh, let's dive in. Let's, uh, let's, uh, do some study on eschatology today, like, at three. Like, come on. I mean, I have not, (laughs) it's been a journey. It's been a journey of learning. It's been a journey of, um, going through different Bibles. And the Life Application Study Bible has been, like, so incredible for me. If y'all don't have that and you're one that struggles with reading and, you know, it's just, it's not like a high value or it's, you value it, but you just, it, it's difficult for you. Like reach out to me. I will give you the link to purchase the best Bible that I consider in the world. Like it's helped me so much. And, and it's been like 10 years. It's like a 10 year strong. Like that's my tried and true. Like that's my number one sword. Like that's my personal study, dive in, learn some things, um, Bible. And then I have like my daily carry. <laughs> it's kind of like guns. I like guns too. A lot of people don't like that. I like guns. Okay. Don't like it. <laughs> Uh, whatever. Like I grew up around guns. We have a healthy relationship with, with guns. And so that's just what it is. And, um, not shy about it. So if that is confronting to you as well, like, sorry, not sorry. (laughs) Um, anyway, I'm done here. God and guns. Amen. Yeah. I saw that you were commenting on a, on a Glock or a holster or something like that recently. Weren't you? I don't know. Um, anyhow, this is real life. Thanks for hanging with me. If you if you want to like live a life of, of authenticity and freedom and reality and live in the truth and get encouraged and actually like have somebody that can relate to like real life stuff, um, this is the place for you. If if you're so confronted by um you know by reality and real life just disturbs you and you think like oh my gosh like I can't believe she said that this is not the place for you go ahead and hit unfollow. Many other people are doing it according to my prayer cuz I'm like, Lord, I don't need that. Like I want I want to I want to connect with people who want to get real, who want to get deep, who want the more of God, who want to experience the heights and the depths and the vastness of God's glory. Those are the people that I want to be around. Those are the people that I want to connect with. Those are the people that I want to do life with because I did the whole perfect polish pretty thing. It ain't me. That's not me. I was not being real. I I think it's phony baloney and I'm just not I'm not playing in that club anymore. So God bless. Thank you so much. My I hope to God my fire is you know I said the other day I was talking to a um a ministry friend of mine and I said I said at the end of my life as I breathe my breathe my last breath and I depart. I depart from this earth. I said what I personally would consider success is to have a track record of people and ministries and many ministries that I was simply behind. 
I said, I would rather, instead, I'm not trying to make a name for myself, make a platform. I don't care about the spotlight. I don't want the spotlight. I've been running from that for a long time. I've been purposely keeping myself small and not overly marketing myself and pushing myself up to the top of anything because I don't want to be there. I don't want to be there. I'm not interested. You guys, I am wearing a t-shirt and ripped jeans, my hair thrown up like this. Yeah, I can, I can pull myself together. Amen. But like, that's not me. And, and I don't want to conform to the patterns of this world or even the patterns of a present day Christianity. I ain't interested. I'm, I'm out. I ain't interested. Been there, done that. Got the t-shirts. I'm out. I'm, I am concerned. I am, I am striving for the teachings of Jesus, which was all about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. So I've been doing some intensive research and study. I'm realizing that the church didn't, or sorry, Jesus didn't really talk about the church and how to institute the church and how to build the local church and how to market the local church and how to hierarchy, you know, the, the hierarchy charts of the local church. I'm realizing through my study, he didn't really talk a lot about that. What he did talk a lot about is the kingdom of God, <gasps> which is a lot different than what we have interpreted as the church. Small groups is awesome. And don't get me wrong, the corporate, the corporate body, the big body needs to come together. It is and in both. So I know there's a lot of people right now that are like, micro churches are the way to go and big church is terrible. No, 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 no. We're, we're not doing that here. This is not the place for that either. I'm not saying you're doing that, but I'm saying that is not my heart. I believe that the Lord works in multiple ways, multiple fashions, multiple styles, multiple, like, you know. He can work in the small groups. He can work in the mega churches. He can work. He can work all. Of, yes, Book of Acts. But you know what? I want to. I want to share something with that. This is getting long, but I'm so glad you're engaging with me. Listen, to this. I was. I was getting involved with the church group in my local area here for a little while, and they were very Acts focused. Very Acts focused, and they're like, "We are just going after the Acts church." You know, like the fire of God come out. We're the upper room experience people. I love it, man. I say, "Oh." Oh yeah, I mean, you, I will, I will clap that all day, for sure. But I, but here, here's what I noticed. Hmm. The people of Acts were getting kind of funky. Yeah, they were getting a little funky. They're doing a little weird stuff, and that is why Paul wrote so many letters to people, going, "Hey, hey, 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 let's talk about that for a second. Hold on a minute." The divisions about I follow this person, I follow that person, well, I'm in this person's club, well, I'm in that person's club, well, I got baptized with this person, well, I'm baptized, well, I'm in this, come on. Paul's like, hey, y'all, cut it out. Whoa, this is the church of Christ, okay? Not the church of Timothy, not the church of Paul, not the church of whatever. And we, present day, are like, well, I'm in this camp, I'm in this club, and it's like, that's cool, nothing wrong with that, but uh, it's about the kingdom of God, and He's the head of the church. He's the head of all the churches. <laughs> like, it's his church. Okay? And so when I look at the people that are so acts focused, I'm like, okay, that's cool, but keep reading. <laughs> keep reading. <laughs> There's more to it because you could be so acts focused that you're getting funky. Let's just, I'm sorry, get real. You got to read the rest of the book, all right? Because there's a lot of warnings. There's a lot of letters, Galatians, Corinthians, Philippians, <laughs> Ephesians. Paul Paul had to go and correct some things. And so we got to keep reading. Amen. Amen. That was great. I'm um, thank you. Thank you for encouraging that conversation. Somebody needed to hear it today. This is going on way too long at this point, but praise the Lord. You guys, keep reading your Bible. We need to get in the word. Amen. Yes, we need to get encouraged. I was listening to a message today by uh, Bill Johnson. And uh, it was about encouraging yourself in the Lord. And, and that's exactly what I need to do in this season right now is encourage myself in the Lord. Because I look around. I look around and I'm like, where did everybody go? Because <laughs> I'm on this journey. And they're like, oh, we don't have time for that journey. We don't have time for that. Like what's going on in your heart. And we don't want to listen to that anymore. Because we're too busy doing our, our cool cool stuff. Our cool club. <laughs> and you're not in our cool club anymore. And I'm like, all right. So, yeah, I'm learning to laugh a lot more because yesterday I was about to cry and shut it all down. So this this right here is a victory in Jesus' name <laughs> as I'm encouraging myself in the Lord because, you know, I realize that 
the, the way that I feel persecuted or the way that I feel rejected is so dumb. It's so dumb in comparison to the history of saints or even present day saints that are like actually dealing with persecution and real life problems. And here I'm crying about who's unfollowing me on Instagram and like, you know, not just that people are, but like people that I care about, people I was doing life with and that just like, I'm sensitive y'all. I am sensitive. I am empath. I might seem all fiery and strong, but truth be told, I am empathic. I feel, I feel very deeply, very, very deeply. So I'm sensitive. And I'm learning how to navigate that and my emotions and, and, um, and my feelings and submit them all under, the, under you know, Jesus' lordship and help him navigate through that. But that is part of the journey and I'm not the only one. And there's so many people in the world who don't feel like they can talk about real life things and that they don't feel like they can connect with Christians anymore because, <laughs> I'm sorry, like I don't feel like smiling today because I'm getting rocked and life is hard. And I love that you're smiling and I love that you have the joy of the Lord in your heart, but like I need to be encouraged Sometimes there are people in the world who just need to be encouraged. And yeah, they're encouraged by your smile, but they're also encouraged by like having a a quality, quality real life conversation. And that's who I am. I am a communicator and that's a gift that the Lord has given me. And I, he's confronted me with that and said, Heather, like, keep it real. Keep it real. There's hurting people in the world who need quality conversation and not just happy clappy. Nothing wrong with happy clappy. I, you know, I, I have praise parties in my own living room, <laughs> praise parties in my own living room, in my own car. So trust me when I say happy clapping, I'm all about it. But then there's real life as well. And, um, and we can't just, you know, get freaked out or confronted with that or, or have, have that be, have someone else's issues or problems be so confrontation to our comfort level that we just go, yeah, I'm just, I'm not, I'm just going to put you at a distance now. I'm just going to put you over there. Thank you for not unfollowing, but you know, I, I'm, I thank you for that. Um, but we're in this to follow Jesus and I'm, I'm trying to become more and more like him every day. And he was feisty. He was feisty. And I don't think that, you know, some of my rants and some of the things that I'm processing through, the reason I'm processing through it so much is because I'm going to God and I'm like, how do you feel about this? Like, I like have interviews in my prayer time with the Lord. Flat out. I have interviews in my prayer time with the Lord. And with my journal and my Bible, I'll get before God and I'm like, Lord, how do you feel about this? Lord, you know, I'm reading Paul's word to the Corinthians about divisions in the church and denominationalism, you know, what we call modern day denominationalism. And I'll just interview God in, in prayer and just be like, how do you feel about that? Like, how is this outworking in our present day world? Like, these re- letters that Paul wrote are, are still relevant in our current day. That's why his word is living and active. And so sometimes I read these things and I'm like, all right, I know this is addressed to you the church of Corinth or whatever, but like, how does this translate to modern day? And I think that part of my journey and part of what I'm processing in my, if you were to see my actual journals, (laughs) talk about confrontational. Okay. I mean, like that's, it's, it's deep. It, they are conversations I'm having with God and I'm asking him, like, how do you feel about this? You know, how do you, how do you feel about these different things? And a lot of times he just says yes. He doesn't give you an actual answer. He's just like, yeah. And you're like, okay, what does that mean? And sometimes he's like, yeah. How many of you have been there before? Like, if you've been walking with the Lord for a while, like, he's just like, mm-hmm. Love him. I love the mystery of the Lord. I love Holy Spirit. Sometimes he just pulls you in a direction. He's like, Yes, I'm there, and yes, I'm there. Yes, I'm I'm the dove, and yes, I'm the fire. Yes, I'm the lion. Yes, I'm the lamb. Like, yes, I'm in the 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 water type baptism, and yes, I'm in the fire baptism. And the Lord takes many forms and shapes, and and what we think is it's so disruptive to our mind because we want to fit God in a box. Speaking to me the other day was reminding me that they are either with Him or against. That's so true. I to that point. I had a, um, I have a person in my life that means a lot to me and, um, this was a couple of years ago and I remember where I was sitting and we were having a, I was having a conversation with this person and I was praying with them in my own spirit because they, they're not walking with the Lord. This person is not walking with the Lord. Very confused, wounded by religion, all kinds of stuff. Okay. Real life. And 
I remember praying as as they were talking to me and and just praying of them in my own in my own spirit. And the Lord, I had this vision of Jesus. This is so vivid. I had a vision of Jesus standing right next to this person. They were sitting in front of me, and Jesus was standing right next to them. And I felt like he, he said to me, spirit to spirit, he said to me, Heather, there will be some people who even if I showed them the wounds in my hands, even if I showed them the slash in my side, they would still reject me. That was harsh. That was a harsh reality, you know? That He's the one that told me I could literally show up and show them my wounds and show them the truth, like, in the flesh or, like, you know, I'm manifest in front of them. And there would still be people that would reject me. And that was hard because it's, I, th- I, th- I got the impression that it was regarding, there's another bug, um, a person that means a lot to me. And I almost felt like, like he was telling me, she's probably never going to accept me. And, and uh, that was a harsh reality. I know. Yeah. For those of us who, <laughs> yeah, I cry often too. I'm a baby. I cry a lot. <laughs> I cry like a lot, a lot. But, um, so sometimes we have to just surrender that to the Lord, you know? We get our hearts broken for people who don't want to choose Him, but He cries more, you know? He's the one that died. He's the one that sacrificed everything. He's the one that has a relentless love for them and a pursuit to be in relationship with them, and He's the one that's rejected. And so, when we're feeling rejection... <laughs> Even in our stupid social media ways. Gosh. You know when we lean into the Lord and we realize we will never, we will never feel the weight, the the extremity of rejection the way that Christ e- did ever, ever. So we cry in our Wheaties over our little things and it's significant to us. But in comparison to what the Lord did for us in that sacrifice, you are so right. We will never understand what real persecution is like. We're far too privileged for that. And um, we're thankful. So this is probably going on like way too long. And I think I'm brewing tea. So I'm going to go drink my tea and finish out my day. And so I just want to pray blessings over anybody who's still watching. Real Talk Heather. Thank you, Adam. Thank you so much, Adam. It's good to see you here. I just pray that you're doing well. Are you working today in the West Valley? Or maybe you get to enjoy the day off. Thank you so much. I'm praying over all you guys. I hope this was encouraging. I hope that this is just a, opens up a real talk conversations. I hope this inspires you to go out into your world, your workplace, your people, your neighborhoods, or whatever. And just, and just you know, you're the image bearer of Christ. Just be real. He was pretty real. He was pretty raw. He was very honest. You know, he's very loving. He's super grace-filled. He was crazy merciful. But he was just a real life person and, and he was comfortable in who he was and the anointing on his life. And so that's what we want to emulate is just to be comfortable with who we are and the anointing on our life and to go about this this world with with just this um not having to constantly battle the identity assaults that come against us and the issues, you know, that arise and, and how the enemy and other people want to, you know, you know opposition and, and rejection. Come on, let's laugh. Let's laugh in the face of the enemy and say, "Uh uh-uh, not not today, devil. We're going to go for it. We're going to keep going because the one matters. You know, there might be 50 people who unfollowed me personally that I actually know and did life with, you know. I'm going to work through that. But the people that did send me messages that that were encouraging and said that these messages really spoke to them and it's exactly what they needed and and they just thanked me for sharing my journey because it allowed them to just feel heard and seen and known and also encouraged um i'm i'm going to say thank you to the 50 people that unfollowed me and i'm going to bless them but i'm going to say i have to keep going because there's confirmations on my own life um, and people are coming and, and, and spending time with me, you know, on these live videos and stuff and are coming back and saying that that's, that's actually what I needed today. And so those people matter. You matter. I'm glad to be here. It's an honor to serve. It's really hard. And I'm out. <laughs> See ya.